Hello and welcome once again to Try to Fit's Toolbox. Today we're going to be reviewing a tool which is PM1240, valve spring compressor, heavy duty variety, used for compressing the uh, valve springs on diesel and petrol engines. And once you've got your valves out you can change your uh, stem seals or if you were going to recondition your head then obviously you want to get your valves out so you can measure them and clean them up. This is suitable for uh, petrol and diesel cylinder heads for removing the valves and if we have a look at the components here this is actually changeable you can screw this off remove it swap it round so we're using the smaller part for petrol engines or smaller engines and it's fairly adaptable for uh, different size valves and spring cups so you've got some choice there the use of the tool is to push the spring cups down and release the collets if you've never seen them before this is what collets look like Unlike a petrol engine, the uh, diesel cylinder head has um, a flat cylinder head and not a recess for the combustion area. However, the screw here, uh, it's uh, got quite a reach on it so you can do petrol and diesel engines with this. Now, the larger size part here will do larger valve uh, spring cups, as you can see. All right, you have a recess that will help you to access the collets. Now, on removing collet here with a magnetic screwdriver like so. So after putting this tool through its paces because I've had this head to bits and put it back together again it works well. It would find itself into a professional workshop with no problem or onto an enthusiast tool board in his garage. If you want one drop on the paddock website and uh, get yourself one. It's value for money and you'll find them under uh, tools here as shown. I'm actually now going to show you a few things about cylinder heads when you're using this tool. It's not just about replacing the stem seals, there's a lot more to it. So if you want to know then watch on. For those of you who are new to um, engines, the valve is held in by collets and retained by the spring cup. Okay, uh, There's grooves in the collets there in the top of the valve. Once you've got the collets off you can remove the valve and spring assembly. I'm going to give you a quick rundown on how to do this and also I'll show you a few things about the uh, cylinder head when you're removing the valves, um, things you really ought to know. Okay so initially you need to put your uh, cylinder head on some blocks of wood and then using a socket what we want to do is actually loosen the collets. Okay you do it this way, socket and then tap the uh, spring cup down so you've jarred loose just slightly the uh, collets from the valve. All right, see like this. Use a longer socket if you like. Okay, depending on what cylinder head you have, and I have a 300 TDI one here, you want to be able to place the uh, this part onto the valve squarely, so it's in the center. This tool has a lever action, and if you find it hard to push and uh, get this into position then slacken off the uh, the threaded part first you don't have to use the lever to push the valve spring down okay I've got this in position and it's nice and square on the spring cup of the valve once it's in position I can then use this part here um, to pull the spring down past the collet so I can remove the collets once you have access to the collets all right you can then nudge them out and they're in two halves. Make sure you don't lose them, they're quite small. So once the collets are out, then you have access to remove the spring. Now what you'll see here is the stem seal, and you have the valve stem itself, okay, so you can pull that out. Easy done. What I will uh, recommend here is to check the valves, and you're going to have valves that have got carbon on them. This needs to be cleaned off. What I will say at this point, it's not just a matter of popping your valves out, cleaning them up, and then dropping in some uh, fresh stem seals to stop uh, oil consumption. You really need to check, measure, and uh, work out the tolerance to see what parts need replacing. Okay, so you have your valves, and what you'll notice you have your carbon, but you also have pitting on the valve face here, okay? That's a working surface, and the same with the valve seat. It can't be pitted at all. Okay, we're going to have to be prepared to measure stuff. And with the old valve, you need to measure it in three places. At the top, in the middle, okay, 
measure the tolerances there to see if they're within what the manual says and at the bottom as well of the valve. This will give you an idea to see if the stem of the valve is worn beyond tolerances. Precision engineering is necessary here so check, measure and recheck. Discard anything that's out of tolerance. Measuring the valve guide itself you're going to need a new valve. Okay, Now that will be put into the valve guide but up to 8 millimeters height to the top of the head of the valve. Once you've done that, then you're ready to get something like a dial gauge. Offer that up and zero it. What we're looking for is movement of a new valve in the valve guide. And you can see the dial gauge here is actually moving. There is a tolerance to this, and that will be found in a workshop manual. You can see by this example here what it's actually saying. Now, these are tolerances and you also want to measure the valve stem of the old valve to see whether it's in with tolerance. If it's not, then it needs changing. Alright, so you can see the movement here quite clearly. This is just out of tolerance. Just out of tolerance. It's a waste of time trying to gauge the movement by doing this. You need to have some accurate measuring equipment. If it's out of tolerance, then you're going to need to uh, take your head to an engineer and have the valve guides changed. Do this process for all eight valves. You will find pitting like this or some type of uh, damage if it's burnt or cracked after you've cleaned the valve you want to get rid of the valve. Valve seat as well. These will need lapping in if the tolerances are right. Okay you use this type of stuff which is fine and coarse grade um, cutting paste which is for lapping the valves as we call them and you do it in this sort of manner. Alright now what this will do is give you a gas tight seal. Another measurement you need to do is valve stand down. You are measuring the gap between the valve head and the face of the cylinder head. Okay, you do this with a straight edge and a feeler gauge through here. That must be within tolerance. This is for old valves and new valves before and after you've lapped these in. Stem seals have a garter like most seals and they need to be in place. They're quite easily removed. However, you must do this if you're uh, reconditioning a head. Have the seals, new ones, every time. Okay. Pushed into place, like so, and uh, we're good to go. Measuring the free length is vitally important as well. If these are out of tolerance, that means that it'll be a weak spring and no good. So measure them, check them against the data, and change as required. Okay, so uh, presuming that everything's hunky-dory, and uh, it's alright. We're going to use this uh, tool that you can get from Paddock again. And it's a fantastic tool, it's heavy duty and it's going to last the lifetime of any enthusiast. It would cope very well in a professional workshop as well and I wouldn't have any problem with this. In fact this is staying in my toolbox. Thank you very much Paddock for that one. So after you get your collars back in, I've managed to do these with my fingers and it's a fiddly job to be honest with you. It can be a pain in the bun. Use a magnetic screwdriver if you need to and uh, drop them into place like so. One on the top and one on the bottom. A drop of oil on the stem does help to stick the collets into place. So once that's done you can then wind off your screw and uh, that will sit the collets into the taper of the spring cup. Okay. There is a quick release handle on this tool which I prefer to use. It's quick. You just need to be aware of what the spring is doing when you do this. Just to give you a bird's eye view of the uh, spring cup and the collets, they're actually on a taper. All right. So once you get them engaged, they sit in there nicely. I will say here that if you look at this one, the collet isn't sitting in properly. This is a pig's ear and you've got to be aware of this. The valve will drop straight away on running the engine. So be aware of this. And you can see somebody's been here before because there's a collet missing on that one. Anyway, the last job to do is to uh, ensure that the collets are seating properly. And with a hammer, I'm using a uh, soft one here, you just need to whack the stems right on the top. If you've had done this for all eight, do all eight. Anyway, that's that job done. And uh, now we can get on and put the head back on.